Our next caller is Jake from North Carolina. What's up, Jake? How can we help you? Hey, guys. What's going on? I'm stoked to be here. So um, a little bit of background first. Uh, I'm a personal trainer and a boxing for MMA coach. Uh, my education is in international relations and national security. Uh, so through that, I met a lot of special operations guys, and it became kind of a research interest of mine as to how to train them as effectively as possible. So the problem is a lot of their programming really sucks and it's outdated and has them drastically overtraining while still neglecting things like agility, mobility and strength and focusing a lot on like calisthenics and long form cardio. So a lot of these guys don't have proper weight training until they get to their units and the amount of injuries is really high. Um, so I guess my question is uh, when these people have control over their own training or when we as trainers have control over their training, how do we balance all these adaptations of like building strength, endurance, muscular endurance, mobility and athleticism and all this stuff while they're still doing things like gunfighting and hand to hand fighting and sky and sea diving and, and all this stuff that, that also costs time and energy to learn. So how do you periodize that? And then how do you program like even on the small level, the micro cycles and stuff? Because I hear you guys advise all the time to pick a priority, right? So if somebody calls in and asks you guys, how do I train for a half Ironman? You say, okay, well, maybe lift one time a week and then focus on the swim, bike, run. So when these guys have all of these things that are priorities, how do they, how do they manage that? Yeah, no, that's a fun, good, fun question. Yeah, it's a good question. And it's like the million dollar question for, for anybody who trains people like this. This is actually the most challenging yep. aspect of it. Now, uh, of course, there's individual uh, variances in how you would train each person, but let's go general first. Here's the beauty, part of the beauty of strength training. You don't have to do a ton of it to, to reap some of its benefits. Because the people you're talking about are, are required to have all these skills and all these physical attributes, um, strength being a big part of it, I would not need, these people do not need to do more than one or two days a week of traditional strength training. In fact, I would probably do one day a week of traditional strength training another day a week where it's you know more geared specific to what they're looking to do with resistance training and really the rest of the week you're focusing a lot on conditioning and skills skills being the most important thing now you being a boxing coach for mma you know probably more than anybody that your skill in boxing is probably the most important thing and then second being your ability to have stamina well, when these guys and girls uh, are are engaging with other people, um, you know that stamina could be life or death, and the skill definitely is life or death. So most of the energy is going to be focused there. Strength training, resistance training, once or twice a week, and once of it, one day a week is going to be that kind of traditional barbell build, you know, kind of that base. And, and then the other day, like I said, it's going to be a little bit more specific to the individual. Yeah. You're focusing on the things that they they lack in, right? So whichever, whatever, if they're less, they have less endurance. So that's, I'm going to put a little bit more focus on that with yeah. that person. If they, if they have less mobility and flexibility and they get injured a lot, then I'm putting more energy in that direction. But this, you know, you know, this, this question reminds me of, and I'm curious to hear your guys' opinion on this. Um, you follow the guy, uh, his name, I think his Instagram oh, handle. Tactical. Yes, Real World Tactical. Real, uh, tactical. That guy's is that right, Andrew? Is real, real, real World Tactical, you know who that is? Yeah, yeah I follow that guy. That okay. Guy's awesome. badass. Yeah. Right, yeah, he's a super badass dude, right? And I'm always curious to like, you know, I like people that are following him, like how many of these people are like going and trying to emulate with Yeah, because I don't know if those are his workouts or those are his video workouts right. for the media. So that's right. what I'm trying, That's what, and that's where I'm alluding to right now. Like, do you think that way of training, like he's like doing crazy endurance very crossfitty type of training yeah. and but he's also uh including some of his tactical stuff in there right so he'll be like dr dragging tires something like that and then he'll do like a roll with a gun and then fire it i mean yeah. i mean very entertaining to watch but when i look at it i go like you know i wonder if if i were to get a special ops guy if my training would look like this or would i be way more tailored and specific to mm -hmm. who, who i'm training and and i wouldn't this is very flashy cool shit to watch but in reality i think i'd be very more specific to my special ops guy and figuring out oh where is he lacking yeah. and then building my core around the things that he is the weakest in to develop that and bring it up and probably doing less of what he's really strong in yeah, yeah i think it's really difficult to have like a generalized kind of standard for programming this because there's so many different attributes you're trying to acquire 
uh, I, I think like it, as far as what I would look at it in terms of priorities, I definitely would want to make sure that there's lots of, you know, recruitative type of, you know, mobility practices uh, instilled uh, every single day. And that's just something that because of it's, you know, they're going through so much body stress. Um, you know, that's something that I would prioritize that, you know, beginning and, you know, all throughout the day uh, to to really make sure that, you know, longevity is considered uh, while going through all this sort of chaotic uh, type of, of stress on the body. Uh, but but to Sal's point, like really just one, two times a week with the actual strength training part. But the skills is what, you know, is the utmost priority with with, you know, that, uh, you know, pursuit. Yeah. And, you know, here's a here's a big mistake people like this often make is they emulate the training of athletes. Now here's why there's a big difference between the way an athlete trains and the way people like this train. Let's say you're going to compete in uh, you're going to compete in a mixed martial art event. You are training and peaking for a specific date. Okay. So you're, there's an off season, there's an right, on right. season, you're yeah. peaking. Okay. These guys have to be ready at all times. There, right. and you there's can't, a timeline there, which, yeah, this is all the time. This is an infinite timeline. If you train these people like they're trying to peak, you're going to overtrain them. Yeah. Okay. There is no peaking because it happens all the time. So really what it is, is you're training them below that peak intensity because they're just ready. They got to kind of be ready all the time. Now, why are skills so important? I mean, come on. You could be the fittest, most awesome person in the world, but if you can't accurately fire your gun or operate under duress, none of that really matters. So, you know, a base of strength, maintain the mobility so you reduce injury, do some athletic well, training in there, and then skill, skill, well, skill, skill, skill. Let's be even more specific. I feel like we're giving my boy, like, nothing right now. Just fucking talking about a bunch of stuff that he's already heard from us. Like, so let's kind of build that right as generic but as specific as we possibly can so would you guys would it look like this what's coming to mind to me right now is i think i would have a one to two day a week very foundational maps anabolic-esque training routine and then i would have three to five days depending on what what how much they're handling throughout the week of skills training and then the way i would dictate the skills training would be i would write a list of all the things from hand-to-hand -hand combat to endurance to rucking to you know body weight strength that have all these priorities of these things that they should be able to accomplish and then i would have skills training days and we would we would order them in the order of priority, meaning that I would do more of whatever I think this uh, special ops person needs the, the biggest help in. Right. And I would focus mostly on those skill days which, and just complement one to two days with like a, a full body type of animal. With, with a real heavy emphasis on recovery uh, yes. and how to get to that point. And so this is where something like HRV, you know, would be something in my mind would, would make a lot of sense in this situation because to be able to monitor their overall accumulation of stress would be very valuable uh, to see like you know where they're at in terms of uh, the beginning of, of the day you know versus uh, you know the end of the day and then the next to to be able to to manage that appropriately now would you guys agree though that this is the type of client though that you would flirt with with overtraining more than undertraining because it's not an athlete who's trying to peak and because I want like mental I want mental and physical resiliency from this person I'm probably going to flirt with that line more often than not than the other way around because I, I don't care if he loses a little bit of muscle or he didn't or he uh, trained a little bit o overtrained so long as I'm looking out for injury and I'm not overtraining in that way but as far as uh, training their their endurance and their their mental fortitude to get through because I feel like that's so important. Like you, you don't want to be so concerned of like, oh, I don't want to like overreach a little bit because I want to build the most muscle for this person. When I know that that shit doesn't matter when they get out into the real world and they got to fucking fight for their life and they got to go for sixteen hours straight with no sleep. Right? Yeah, I would go the opposite. No, I would not flirt with overtraining because when you're pushing that line all the time, and remember, this is a job, so they're doing it all the time, right? So now you're at the line. You're doing this job all the time. Life is stressful. I think that would be a mistake. What I would do is I would play under mm. overtraining. The resistance training I would do is 30 to 45 minutes. That's it. So 30 to 45 minutes once or twice a week. The other three to four days a week, you're looking at about an hour of training and then additional 30 minutes of mobility, and that's it. Now, that doesn't sound like you're getting them peaked and ready, but what we're talking about is a long-term fitness readiness. I mean, I tell you what, when I'm on the border uh, line of overtraining, I'm not in my peak performance. I'm pushing 
to get to peak performance, but you imagine maintaining that. Yeah, but all you, the gotta, time. You, you don't agree that you're going to have to flirt with that at least once a week or once a month, yeah. where you are pushing that, trying to push that for for the mental fortitude reason and for them to push the intensity like that. Because I, well, they probably it, have days already structured for that. Yeah, and that's going to happen naturally. Yeah. And you're talking about people who, and let, maybe if they're beginners and they just signed up for the police academy and they got to kind of figure it out. But when somebody's at this point, like they've got what they kind of need, they just need to maintain their health, their fitness. Well, I being I have not trained a lot of special ops people, so I, the complete transparency here, so we know that I'm not a fucking expert in this yeah, field. So right. I, I think I would want to know that because here you have to understand. So if they if okay, I agree with you guys if if that is built in because but you can't train this person. Uh, always under a little bit for an hour when then real quick they're going to be out in the field for 16 hours and be beat up all day long and you're and that's like the most intense thing they've ever experienced I, because I, you haven't given them that I all. think they'll be more uh, prepared and better to deal with those things if they're good fit but within but under yeah. that limit of over I would only do that if I could test it immediately and see like yeah. again with heart rate and things like that or like you know lactate <laughs> threshold or Dude. you know whatever well, like, I love th those types yeah. of tests because then I can actually I love appropriately that. see how quickly I can recover I, from I, the stress. I love what you're saying there because you know our good friend Corey Schlesinger who shout out to him right now who is out there with the Suns who are in the championship right now is the is the strength yeah. and conditioning coach who came on the show and talked about how he utilizes HRV. I I think that this would be extremely valuable with these athletes. For that exact reason, because I feel like th there's got to be when I look at their heart rate variability and go, oh, he is fully rested tomorrow. I'm bringing the heat on him. I want him to. Uh, we're going to stretch his capacity tomorrow, and then I'm going to back off, and then I'm going to scale back. But I I want to be. I do want to push m my special ops guy for the mental fortitude reason. Like this, it's well, that, that, in this situation, mental fortitude is probably one of the highest priorities. Of course, yeah. but, and so of, it, it, to be able to get into that calm state. Uh, is everything. I feel like, Sal, your guy's going to be a pussy. My no. guy's going to beat you up no, and down no, all no, day no, long, no, bro. No, they're not. Look, by if the, you're going to be under training them all no, the time. No. By the time you're there, that's you've already proven that. You're, you're, you've are you're already got some of that. And again, the biggest mistake, I've trained uh, special ops. I've trained SWAT people. I've worked with them. I, when I did jiu-jitsu, I had a lot of people right after your at that zoo level. People. Yes, <laughs> right after zoo people. <laughs> and you know what the biggest problem was? The biggest problem was people that were always after it all the time. They were just chronically... Right. Over training. I, I, okay, so that's why I brought up more the, prone to wanting That's to why I brought up the real yeah. world tactical guy because I don't subscribe to training like that all the time. Because I know that that type of training, day in day out, would be way too much for the average special ops person I'd be training. Yeah. But it, I, you have to agree that the, 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 the like Justin said, the, the mental fortitude has to be one of the top priorities, and so you got to stretch that capacity sometimes. Yeah, and, they, and, and you're you're trying to say that oh, if they got to special ops, they've they've done that before. So what? You're just gonna not have to. You're not gonna no, train that ever. It's already part of their training. That's already included. well. Okay, now that's. Do you know that? I don't know that. I do absolutely. This is they. They still do training on a regular basis. Their practices still involve a lot of that. But I, like I said, I think if you're, it's okay if you're training somebody who's going to go on a mission, very different than if you train somebody who this is what they do all the time. It can happen at any moment. Like, well, J Jake, do you know? Sorry, we haven't even brought you in this conversation very much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you're good. You're good. Um, I would say when, so a lot of times their, their training pipelines are like two years and it's very, very focused on mental fortitude, right? So these guys are just doing obscene amounts of like calisthenics and just tearing their bodies down. And I think a lot of times once they get to their units, if they're not at a school, like if they're at dive school, it's going to be like more of the same. But if they're just training and trying to get better, it's a lot of more like, okay, let's actually go for strength now and let's actually try to build athleticism. Because, I mean, we we were selected then because of our mental fortitude, if go. that makes sense. Okay, okay. Um, so Sal's right. But, Sal's can, right here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if I could kind of like take a step back, though, um, you guys recommended like maybe two foundational, like, or I should say fundamental strength days. So would you then like, would you take a phasic approach to it and kind of like drop everything else? Like say, you know, your, your five mile runs for time, would you drop that, that down to like maintenance volume? And then on the fundamental strength thing, would you take them through like maybe, okay, on our two fundamental strength days, it's going to be like a mesocycle of like 
Mass Anabolic. And then after we get done with that, we're going to switch to like more of a phase two mass performance type thing. Yeah, Is yeah, yeah. Would, yeah, I would still phase like it. Yeah. And I would do I like one. That. If you have the ability to do that. Yeah, yeah, and I would do one, you know, longer run uh, during the week. And then the rest of the, the conditioning is going to be sprint based. Uh, it's not going to be kind of like these long distance type runs. You're looking at speed, performance, agility. Um, that kind of stuff. I mean, I don't know how often you guys in the field are having to run five or 10 miles. You still need that stamina, but oftentimes in my, from, again, from the people I worked with, it's like, you got to react fast. You got to be quick. Um, and you got to sprint and sometimes the sprints are longer than a sprint, but it's typically not like this long six or seven mile, you know, type of pursuit. So I would incorporate that kind of stuff, agility work. Um, and again, the str even once a week, I promise you, like I said, I, I, I worked with, specifically, there's one guy I can think of right now. He's now actually a, a high level jujitsu competitor, but he was a SWAT team and he was doing weight training three or four days a week. And he was having issues with his joints and he backed all the way down to one day a week, 45 minutes. His strength went through the roof and he just felt so much better. And he's like, I can't believe this basic and low of, of, of volume it's making me feel so good. I'm like, well, dude, you do so much other stuff. Yeah. That's about it. Well, you know? if you, yeah, if you can structure it in a way where you can actually take that 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 one phase where you have a couple weeks where you're a little more focused on, specifically on strength, you, you bring down the endurance a bit, uh, but you know you come back to it. So it's obviously like the endurance part is going to be like more of the priority within this setting. Uh, but to be able to kind of focus in on that, your body's going to be able to respond better and get you know that that base level strength more efficiently. Uh, but then you're going to have to cycle yeah. back. Uh, you know, into your your heavy endurance. Now, Jake, you said you're a personal trainer. Um, Obviously, so you can hear I'm, the way he's talking. Yeah, I'm going to send. Do, do you have Maps Prime Pro? No, I have I have Prime, but I don't have Prime Pro. Yet. Okay, oh, yeah, so go. I'm going to send that to you because as a trainer, I think that's going to have the most value for you. Uh, you're going to be able to apply this with your training and other people's training. You're going to love that program. Great correctional exercise. So we'll send that over to you, and we appreciate you calling. Yeah. Hey, I appreciate you guys so much. Have a good one. No problem. Yeah, I, 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 I tell you, it's like there's so, the big mistake is like. No, you're right. I'm you're, on a you're, peak. You're right. You're right. You're right. I mean, that was uh, again. I didn't. I don't have very much experience training these, so I don't know what their protocol looks like outside of what I would be you know, like. And I'm thinking I'm controlling all their activity. If I'm controlling all their activity, I know that I want to make sure I push that. But based off of what you said and what Jake confirmed, is that. You know, they have so much of that outside of the training with me mm -hmm. that you're right. You, I don't need to push that. They're getting that already. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably leaning more towards the recuperative and skills training with a very minimal amount of strength training one to two days a yeah. week.